Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and within the seven continent model of the world, most people understand that Asia has the majority of the world's people, Australasia has the majority of its dangerous animals, Europe has the majority of its atrocities, and Africa has most of its problems, while North America has most of its solutions, but South America is a bit of an enigma to most. It is the continent that stays most out of world affairs, and this is great, but it means that unless you are South American or know someone from there, you might not actually know what's going down across all of these different countries, and and intriguingly enough, the most famous animal from South America isn't actually in the most famous country from South America. And so given that there is a llama South America and a non-llama South America, I figured it'd be interesting to divide the continent into two in many other ways to help you understand what's actually going down there. And let's start with the most important map of any continent. Let's go through the GDP per capita and particularly the progress of it over the last 40 years. About 40 years ago, most countries were low to middle income, uh, but in that 40 years, you've seen there's been a huge transformation with basically everywhere besides Venezuela hitting that middle income bracket and you could make a decent argument that Argentina, Chile and Uruguay are actually in a really different category now which is very very good. They moved up and they're uh, at least somewhat wealthy on the world stage which is especially impressive for Argentina given how things have gone historically uh, and how they used to be the richest country and had a huge downturn from there um, but you can see that this means that there is a huge north-south divide within South America which is funny to say given that some people don't even believe believe that this is a continent that is divided into, but if you do believe, uh, uh, you know, some people think that this is all one big continent, but within the more common uh, spread view of the world, which says that this is a continent, there is a north-south divide even within South America. Similarly within North America, but that's a point for a different time, and within the South of America, there is a huge wealth uh, increase relative to the north. This is something which leads to higher life expectancy, because as we all know, you know a, a lot of people think that when you look at GDP, it's like, what does this even matter, man? Why do you even want more money and it's like well because you would like to live longer actually as you can see Chile has some one of the world's uh, best <laughs> life expectancies and uh, most countries in South America are batting slightly above the world average except for Bolivia where ooh things are actually going a little bit dangerously. Which is, I, I guess, a good point to realize that, yeah, even though uh, Bolivia does have a slightly higher GDP per capita, in Venezuela, despite all of the craziness going down that is definitely going to rear its head in this video, it does at least do slightly better uh, relative to its wealth. It's just that it doesn't have much wealth because that wealth has gone into some interesting places. So as you can see, there is a life expectancy divide in South America that sort of goes north to south, but not quite as smoothly as you'd expect. And so if we then go into approval of the US. This was a, so all of the maps in this video have been uh, put together by my editor. We'll leave a link to sources down below. In future, they'll be on the maps themselves. Um, but uh, he insisted on including this one because, uh, he, and I thought it was a really interesting map to include. I, I didn't think it would be that uh, you know, unique to look at. I figured everywhere is going to be about the same, but this is why it's so intriguing. If you look, there is this broad appeal for uh, the United States in Central South America uh, with even Brazil, which I, I just assumed they would have some uh, deep level hatred for uh, the United States because they're always getting into some spat about import tariffs or about uh, reciprocal uh, visa requirements. I'm always hearing about some way that you know, <laughs> Brazil and the United States are not getting along. However, as you can see, 60 to 69% of the people still like Americans regardless. That's higher than Mexicans, interestingly enough. And you can see that in general, the majority of the continent, even in Venezuela, even in Venezuela, they believe that, yeah, the US is broadly a good thing with only one exception to that rule being being, as you can see here, Argentina. This absolutely blew my mind and is a way that the North-South divide uh, was going, is the exact opposite of what I would otherwise expect. And yeah, Argentina, what's going on? You guys should love America. You both have stripes in your flags and I guess you technically also have a star in yours. Although yours has a face in it. It's very strange. It's the most unsettling flag in the world, I've got to say. Um, I, I would much prefer people go over the Brazilian flag. At least it's just got the world on it. Um, some of the world's most unique flags come from South America, uh, but we can't easily map that. So let's instead say uh, that there is another north-south divide in the most popular country to emigrate to. So outside of Guyana having a, uh, sorry, uh, Suriname having a particular link to the Netherlands, um, uh, it which obviously is shown here and makes it a weird outlier on this map. Also a weird outlier in terms of the actual... Uh, 
you know, in terms of the fact that they don't cleanly fit into Latin America, because Dutch is not a Latin uh, language, but that's a point for a different time. Um, outside of the fact that Venezuelans are largely fleeing their country, and so it's not it's not really emigrating as much as it is like you know like getting out, but it, it still counts. So um, outside of these two examples, uh, and then Argentina, which can't emigrate to Argentina as much as I'm sure Argentinians would love to, you can see that there is a north-south divide of people who want to go to the United States as the next big economy, or people who want to go to Argentina. If anything, this sort of proves the point that one of the largest pull factors in immigration is if you can go somewhere and have a broadly better life, you're going to want to do that. It is something I'm sure we all experience. If you ever go to somewhere like Switzerland and you hear that the minimum wage is the equivalent of like uh, double uh, the average wage in your country, you're like, you know, why don't we just go there? Why don't we go to the expensive country in the world? And uh, indeed, uh, if you're South American, this face has a pull to you. You look at it and you think, yeah, one day I'll make it over there. And I think that's a really interesting, uh, uh, it's, it's a really interesting point that I wouldn't have expected all of the countries around Argentina emigrate to Argentina more commonly commonly than to the United States or to any European country. Speaking of European countries, let's talk about the death rate due to homicide. This is really alarming. Again, one of the downsides of Venezuela's system, it, 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 I, I'm actually quite surprised that they managed to top Brazil on this one, because to the outside world, uh, Brazil is the place you're always worried about being murdered in, but again, actually you should be worried about Colombia even more, and then even more than that, Venezuela, not that you'll be going to Venezuela anytime soon, but you can see that even though uh, South America is a continent which has has a, uh, a reputation for being a little bit dangerous. The actual number of murders that happen there is higher than the world average, but it's still like 20 people in every 100,000. Even in Venezuela, this super dangerous hotspot, it's still like, what, one in every um, <laughs> 200, uh, one in every 200 people, um, one in every 2,000 people uh, gets murdered there, which is, I guess, actually pretty bad if you say it like that. Yeah, that's actually really horrific. Don't go to Venezuela anytime soon, but that's as high as it gets on the continent. And as you can see, when you get south, it gets relatively safe again, with a unique little exception being made for the north over here, which I think is very, uh, I, I, I think it's incredibly interesting. Uh, that also it's kind of like, you know, where, where there are llamas, there is a low murder rate. And I do not know why these graphs possibly line up, but I do think it's incredibly interesting. And maybe you do too. So speaking of, maybe, maybe, maybe where there are llamas, you can chill out. I'd like to believe it's not that people are murdering llamas instead of each other. I like to think that you you think about murdering your close uh, you know, your your business rival, and then you say, you know what? Actually, this guy's real chill. I'll go for a ride on him instead. Speaking of going for a ride, corruption perception. This is one of the again the other stereotypes of South America, which I guess you know, looking at the percent, it does seem broadly true. It's a scale of zero to one hundred, and so the fact that every South American country bar two. Um, is in the 0 to 50 category isn't good, right? I think that's something that should be saying, uh, worth saying. However, I think that, you know, ultimately, when you actually look at the map, it's like, yeah, it's Corruption Perception Index. This is something which is very crucial to say. And uh, really, outside of Western Europe, where there's a few countries grouped together, uh, most continents have, like, two countries that people trust. In Asia, it's, uh, you know, Singapore and Japan. In Australasia, it's Australia and New Zealand, which is actually third in the world. In Africa, you've got, like, Rwanda and Botswana, but generally speaking, corruption is something which is very common as people tend to look after people uh, they know more than they don't. And so corruption is a great thing if you live locally and don't care about the international world. And uh, But I, I think in general, it's not as bad as you think. Most countries here are about at the global average, if not the tiniest bit below it. And so if anything, that makes it more impressive that Uruguay um, and, uh, and Chile in particular shoot so high above that uh, average. And indeed, this is something I think Argentina is working on right now. So maybe we'll come back to this in the future and they'll be even higher. I, I look forward to seeing where that goes because it actually went down in 2023 um, and in 2024, maybe it goes up or maybe it goes the opposite way. Hard to say for sure. But yeah, an interesting uh, equivalent of this is how much people believe the government favor the elite. You can see there is just this huge... A uh, ridiculous difference between <laughs> Brazil uh, here, uh, and, and it's interesting because it includes uh, Latin America as a whole, so we've got Mexico on here too, but you can see there is just a huge difference between how much people think uh, the government favor the elite over here versus anywhere else, and interestingly enough, even in uh, Venezuela, which is uh, you know fully socialist
this country, uh, people still think there is an elite, which is a interesting thing that happens in most countries that claim to be egalitarian. You can claim to be equal all you like, but the way people see it is like, yeah, but you're equal to the elite more than anyone else, and that is, I, I don't know, like a, a wide point that human beings have, whether you like it or not, if you are uh, someone who leans that way. As you can see, people genuinely think that the elite are cared about less in Bolivia, uh, maybe because they're dying soon like everyone else. But interestingly enough, if we go into religion, you can see that there is a freeway split, or, you know, most most continents, when you look at uh, the uh, uh, Christianity, you can say, oh, it's Catholic versus Protestant citizen. You know, the two, <laughs> I said that horrifically wrong, uh, Protestantism, Protestant, Mart Martin Luther King's religion. Um, anyway, uh, Martin Luther's religion, I should say. Um, but if, if, if most continents, <laughs> I can't say the word prot Protestantism. Protest, uh, am I having a stroke right now? But yeah, if this, but as an ism, um, is, a, is a really interesting, and it's not by Martin Luther King, it's by Martin Luther. Um, it's a, the, the offshoot of, uh, of Catholic is generally uh, the one which is more widespread around the world, uh, except for in Latin America, where Catholics dominate everywhere. And again, you would expect there to be one country where Protestants are actually uh, the larger number, but no, uh, broadly speaking, you can see here like, yeah, in Brazil, it's sort of close as in it's two to one. But the more interesting uh, difference here is which countries are irreligious. That is to say, do not have any belief in any of this stuff. And as you can see, North-South divide coming at it once again. Is it a thing where as you get more money, uh, you start to uh, you know favor religion less because you need it less in your life? You've got cold hard cash to enjoy yourself with. Uh, I don't know for sure, but I do know that it's absolutely fascinating. Speaking of absolutely fascinating, I've got one last map to show you, and it's the one that's really going to to divide uh, South America in two in the most illuminating way. I'm just kidding. It's going to be exports, which does then sort of, this is the first time you see that there is an interesting uh, divide which goes east to west again, but dividing uh, you know, Argentina and Chile down the middle. One of the most interesting geography facts that just isn't obvious to anyone uh, outside of the continent is the fact that there is a huge border between Argentina and Chile, and it looks like, you know, like Argentina really got the better side of this, but what it actually is is there's a ridiculous mountain range between the two, and it means that, you know, they, they loosely use that mountain range to work out their border. I say loosely because there's a there's a little bit of a gap between the border here that you've just got to kind of vibe out for yourself. Um, but yeah, this is why Argentina and Chile are the way they are. Wherever the mountain range was was always going to create two different countries because they kind of go to two different very uh, two very different bodies of water. Um, but this is one of the ways in which they split and don't go the exact same way because Chile gets a lot of copper and other mining resources, whereas Argentina and Brazil, indeed, and indeed Paraguay are very much about the farming, particularly of soy. I you be fascinated when you look into this enough just how many countries make so much money selling soybeans to the world and uh, then you can see in the north there's a lot of petroleum I always just assumed it was Venezuela because Venezuela has the world's largest uh, oil reserves I always assumed it was just Venezuela but as it turns out you know not only does Guyana get in on the action but also so too does Colombia and even more interesting Ecuador uh, they they export a lot of petroleum to the world and we all love petroleum and that is something which I, I, I think is true but there's one thing we love more than petroleum because what's the point of having petroleum if you can't go and visit the world right and one of the biggest uh, things that I think we've list missed out from every map here is uh, you you'll notice that uh, not only do we sometimes include uh, all of Latin America just because you know the, the data is there and it's often considered to be uh, relatable but you'll, often, you'll you'll see that outside of this homicide map uh, all of the maps we've shown today do have a little bit of a blank spot in that top right corner what is the reason for this, I hear you asking, maybe, uh, and that is because there is a huge divide in South America, and that divide is based on how many Eiffel Towers there are. That's right, in South America, there is one Eiffel Tower in this country over here, but there's actually zero Eiffel Towers on the rest. If you think about the effect this will have on the... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm done with this, sorry. I, I, can't, I can't give this up anymore. Uh, this is my favorite map of South America, and I will show it in every video about the continent until the day I die. Uh, today has been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you liked that all of our maps were lined up in terms of uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the way that they're laid out and the colors and stuff. Did you like that? Did you think it was useful? Did you think it was worth the hours of my editor's time uh, because I think it's a really uh, I think it's one of the small ways that we can hopefully make the channel look that little bit better but if you hate it then let me know also consider giving me money over at Patreon 
apparently two new people have just become members. Look at that. We're at an all-time high, as best I can tell. Uh, would you like to make it an even all-time higher? <laughs> I bet you might. Uh, yeah, consider supporting the channel if you want to see more videos like this one. And uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, then go to Brazil, but not if you want to see llamas. You gotta, you gotta go to other places for that. Uh, I, and, and now I know that, I will stay away from Brazil. With that said, I, by the way, fun fact, this is still the only continent on Earth besides Antarctica I haven't been to. Every time I make plans there, they just, they fall apart. Um, there, I, I'm starting to believe that genuinely, maybe South America doesn't exist. So let me know, are you South American and do you exist? Yes or no? Uh, I, I will give, give me your best updates you can. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, because I'll see you next time. Or maybe I won't. Who knows? Goodbye.